Pakatan Harapan supporters urge to respect consensus on power transition. EPF declares dividend of 5.45% for 2019. Good evening, thanks for joining us. You're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Now, PKR President Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim today wants all party members and Pakatan Harapan PH supporters to respect the decision on power transition made by the PH Presidential Council last night. He said the decision achieved at the meeting was based on a consensus which also included his and PKR's decision. Thus, Datuk Sri Anwar urged the government and leadership of the party to focus on the economy issues and efforts to mitigate the effects of COVID-19. Tumpuan kita adalah tentang ekonomi kita dan juga menghadapi sedikit kesan dari coronavirus. Jadi uh, itu yang menyebabkan kita mengambil keputusan yang sedemikian semalam. Jadi saya harus mengayu dan besar kawan-kawan hormati keputusan ini dan uh, kalau dari segi pimpinan keadilan saya tidak akan benarkan umpamanya mana-mana serangan atau kecaman terhadap keputusan ini. The Port Dickson Member of Parliament said this after attending the National Muslim Students Association or PKPIM gathering in Bangi. Meanwhile, the leadership of Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad is still needed to rebuild the nation. Now, according to Parti Amana Negara or Amana Communications Director Hali Abu Samad, the claims of infighting for posts were made up by certain quarters to give the impression that the PH government was unstable and not strong. Nevertheless, the decision agreed at a meeting last night proved that the PH government is a responsible government which gives importance to the benefits of the people. He added that the PH struggle is not the struggle for any individual, but it is to create a clean government that is responsible for its people. Dia tak ada orang lain boleh masuk lah. Uh, pasal seperti mana yang kita tahu ada banyak usaha-usaha untuk nak uh, rosakkan dan sebagainya. Uh, so kita beritahu pada uh, negara dan bagi dunia uh, bahawa kerajaan PH tu mantap uh, di bawah kepimpinan Tun Mahathir. Jadi eh? sebarang tarikh tu. Itu terpulang pada uh, Tun untuk nak uh, tentukanlah So dalam uh, kita punya majlis pun kita setuju uh, Kita takkan buat apa-apa uh, uh, tuntutan dan tekanan dan sebagainya uh, Yang penting uh, kerajaan Pakatan Harapan itu uh, terus uh, memerintah dan mentadbir negara dengan baik Dan mendatangkan manfaat kepada rakyat Ini perjuangan kita bukan perjuangan untuk mana-mana individu Ianya adalah untuk uh, mewujudkan sebuah kerajaan yang uh, bersih dan uh, bertanggungjawab terhadap terhadap rakyat. Semua pihak telah menyampaikan pandangan. Kita menimbang setiap perkara dan uh, itu keputusan terbaik yang kita sepakati uh, yang telah dibacakan keputusannya oleh Yang Amat Berhormat Perdana Menteri malam tadi. Yang paling penting adalah uh, PH itu intact, functioning, kerajaan juga terus berfungsi. <coughs> During the PH Presidential Council meeting last night, which was chaired by Tun Dr. Mahathir himself, all leaders of the component parties unanimously agreed for Tun Dr. Mahathir to determine the date for the power transition. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail today says the government will focus on addressing problems and issues facing the country, especially the impact of the COVID-19 infection on the economy, rather than on the power transition. She said the matter on the handing over of the Prime Minister's post by Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad to his successor had been agreed at the Pakatan Harapan PH Presidential Council meeting last night. And then uh, untuk memperbaiki sebab kita ada banyak masalah juga uh, kerana kita dihadapi dengan uh, kluster uh, um, um, coronavirus ni, COVID-19 ini dan cara mana kita menanganinya sebab kita ada rentetan bahawa lepas itu bahawa uh, ekonomi kita akan uh, terkesan uh, dengan uh, negatif lah. Ya. Dan itu yang akan membawa kita satu um, fokus yang kita semua akan fokus uh, atas tu sebab kita ada perjanjian bahawa ada uh, ada peralihan itu telah disepakati semalam dan juga kita uh, takkan bagaimana kalau tarikhnya adalah lepas ekad 
The deputy premier said this when asked on the decision of the PH Presidential Council meeting last night for the power transition to be after the APEC 2020 summit in November and that Dun Dr. Mahathir himself would determine when to step down. Earlier, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza, who is Pandan Member of Parliament, joined the 500 participants in the fun ride organised by the Ampang Community Cycling Club. On the fun ride, she said it was an activity to promote healthy living and suitable for the people from all walks of life and age groups. Now, the American woman who was confirmed positive for COVID-19 is showing positive signs of recovery from the disease. Health Director General Datuk Dr. Norhisham Abdullah said the 83-year-old woman who is the 22nd case in Malaysia was still being monitored in hospital for a slight cough. According to Datuk Dr. Norhisham, the patient who was confirmed with the virus on the 15th of February was given the antiviral treatment. He said after more than 72 hours of treatment, the patient was showing significant improvement. Thus, the repeated COVID-19 tests were done twice, 24 hours apart. Datuk Dr. Norhisham said both retests have shown negative results and the retests were conducted to ensure that the patient has fully recovered with negative COVID-19 infection results. He said the latest study on COVID-19 found that almost 80% COVID-19 patients were reported to have mild symptoms and there were no specific treatments for the disease. He added that the retest would be performed on all patients who were positive for COVID-19 once they were showing positive signs of recovery from the symptoms. This is to ensure that patients have fully recovered and free from the COVID-19 virus. Now, the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, or KPDNHEP, has submitted views and feedback of industry players to the Prime Minister and Finance Minister to be included in the economic stimulus package. Its Minister, Datuk Sri Saifuddin Nasution, said the views and proposals were submitted to the government after gathering feedback from dialogue sessions held among the ministry and the industry players on the impact of the COVID-19. Saya telah menyampaikan kepada Yang Amat Bawamak Perdana Menteri pada hari Rabu lepas, sejurus selepas uh, masyarakat kabinet. Dan uh, saya juga telah menyerahkan kepada Menteri Kewangan yang sedang uh, menyelaras uh, persiapan pakej rancangan bersama Yang Amat Bawamak Perdana Menteri. Dalam laporan itu terkandung beberapa syur yang merupakan uh, cadangan dan harapan daripada industri uh, perdagangan dalam negeri ini. Datuk Sri Saifuddin, however, did not elaborate on the content of the suggestions in detail. Speaking after launching the Fresh Village supermarket in Bangi Selangor today, he said the feedback is hoped to help industry players to offset the impact of the virus on their sectors. Malaysia is among the first country to introduce economic stimulus package to mitigate the impact of COVID-19. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad is set to unveil the package on the 27th of February. Now, a tanker ship along with its crew were detained after they failed to show the required sales and purchase documents involving 450 litres of diesel to the authorities. The tanker and its load of fuel were seized, making a combined total seizure value of around 2 million ringgit. Sabah Region 4 Marine Police Commander ACP Mama Pajeri Ali in a statement said the arrest was made in an operation dubbed Ob Galora Hus, which is an interagency operation between the police and Labuan Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry. He said the tanker was detained at about 5 p.m. yesterday. Seven crew members, all aged between 26 and 43, were on board the ship during the arrest. The police also seized the ship and its domestic shipping licenses. ACP Mama Pajeri said the case is being investigated under Section 21 of the Control of Supplies Act 1961 and Rule 13, Subsection 1 of the Control of Supplies Regulations 1974. An 18-year-old boy was arrested after he was found in possession of several packages of Ketom water at 11.30 p.m. yesterday. Kulin Police Chief Superintendent Mama Yusuf Shari said the boy threw away the packages as soon as he noticed a police roadblock in front of him at Jalan Sungai Limau in Kulin. 
Superintendent Mama Yusuf said the police found a total of 14 packages of liquid believed to be cut on water in the suspect's possession in an integrated operation with the road transport department. The suspect, who was unemployed, was believed to be selling the cut on water to his customers around the area other than consuming it himself. Superintendent Mama Yusuf said the cut on water were later seized and the case is investigated under Section 30, Subsection 3 of the Poisons Act 1952. He added that in the same operation, more than 200 vehicles were inspected and as many as 123 summonses were issued for various traffic offences. to propel Malaysia into becoming an innovation-led economy. The Employees Provident Fund, or EPF, delivered a solid performance for 2019 in terms of both its operational and financial results, allowing it to declare a dividend of 5.45%, with a payout amounting to 41.68 billion ringgit for Simpanan Convencional. Chief Executive Officer Ali Zakri Alia said that as anticipated, there was substantially more volatility in 2019 as compared to 2018. With this, the EPF delivered a 2.95% above what is mandated under the EPF Act 1991, which requires it to declare at least a 2.5% nominal dividend every year. In a statement release, EPF said their three-year average dividend for Simpanan Conventional after adjusting for inflation stood at 4.33%, which is 2.33 percentage points above the fund's three-year rolling target of 2%. For Simpanan Sharia, which was started in August 2016, the Provident Fund declared a 5% dividend with a payout amounting to 4.14 billion ringgit. EPF's overall investment assets grew to 920 24.75 billion ringgit as it experienced a 2.8% growth in membership to 14.6 million while its registered employer base expanded by 3% to 522,300 employers. The National Automotive Policy or NAP 2020 can propel Malaysia into becoming a leading country in new ideas and innovations. Senior lecturer from Putra Business School, Associate Professor Dr. Ahmed Razman Abdulatif, hopes the policy will further transform Malaysia's role from consumer country to supplier country. According to Professor Dr. Ahmed Rasman, the policy could also be a catalyst for locals to engage in high-skill supply chains such as the automotive industry. Ini mungkin lebih kepada pembangunan modal insan. Adakah rakyat kita sudah ramai yang mempunyai kemahiran yang tinggi, pengetahuan yang sejajar dengan teknologi tersebut? Mungkin di situ perlu ada usaha atau insentif untuk menggalakkan lebih ramai rakyat kita yang menceburi bidang-bidang seperti ini dan tidak hanya bergantung kepada tenaga kepakaran luar. Sayang jika kita uh, hanya menjadi pengguna kepada segala teknologi ini padahal kita mempunyai uh, polisi dasar yang sepatutnya membantu rakyat kita untuk uh, menikmati uh, apa yang dia boleh ditawarkan eh, di era teknologi seperti ini rupa. According to him, NAP 2020 reflects the government's commitment to position the country as the leading automotive industry in the region. It is in 
line with technological developments with a special focus on new generation vehicles, mobility as a service or MAAS, and Industrial Revolution 4.0, IR 4.0. Stakeholders from government agencies to private sector. The Proton have praised the government's decision to make Malaysia as a hub of development and production of next generation vehicles, NXGV, and its important components. Its Chief Executive Officer Dr Lee Chun Rong in a media statement said the new strategy presents opportunities to stakeholders in the automotive industry to introduce new technologies to the country while also elevating the skills and capabilities of the local vendor. Lee said the unveiling of NAP 2020 shows Malaysia is moving towards the adoption of new technology vehicles featuring electric and hybrid powertrains as well as autonomous and connectivity technologies. Under NAP 2020, Proton is able to leverage on its shareholders' strengths, giving it access to local ecosystems via DRB Highcom and access to new technologies via Geely Auto Group. At this early stage, Proton will continue with its schedule of investing in new products and technologies, as well as plant and manufacturing facilities. The company will also continue to work with local vendors and promote investments in new technologies, especially through strategic collaborations. Indonesian students killed after flash floods sweep scouts in Yogyakarta. Better and more coming up in our point seconds. On to in our top story, Pakatan Harapan supporters urge to respect consensus on power transition. Join us again at 12:30 tomorrow afternoon. I beg your pardon. Join us again at seven tomorrow. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to TV Two and have a pleasant evening.